Lords, ladies, and good gentles all, I would ask you to prepare to show your courtesy and honour as our official party of heralds, sheriff, guest of honour, and our Lord and Lady of Abistow with the guard process to the castle of Abistow. of the relics of St. Swithin of Winchester, Bishop and Confessor. And thus, as the rhyme goes, if St. Swithin's day thou dost reign, forty days it shall remain. If St. Swithin's day, if thou beest fair, forty days shall reign never. Therefore, my lords and ladies, we are in for forty days of fine sunny, mild weather. Huzzah! Huzzah! Let me welcome our Lady of Abistow, the Lady Edith Cuff OAM, Director of the Abbey Medieval Festival. Ladies, 
Welcome to the 29th annual Abbey Medieval Festival, an event that celebrates the flowering of the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages was a time of transformation, discovery and exploration. It was during this period of history that we saw the building of formidable castles and magnificent cathedrals. There were new discoveries in science and medicine and the exploration of unknown worlds began, of heroes rising above adversity, of bloody crusades and dynastic scheming. Today, you will experience just a little of this history here as you explore our festival. Our festival is hosted by the Abbey Museum of Art and Archaeology. The museum holds one of Australia's premier collections of international fine arts and antiquities. The success of our festival ensures our ability to care for the collection and continue to provide quality educational and public programs for all to enjoy. The museum collection covers more than 500,000 years of human story, the remarkable evidence of human endeavour and creativity. And if you have an opportunity today to visit the museum, please do so, as we have just recently put on display a 15th century limestone carving of um, the lamentation, a most beautiful piece of medieval sculpture and really worthwhile to have, have um, spent some time um, admiring. The festival brings together more than a thousand medieval reenactors, musicians, street performers from across Australia and overseas to present a dynamic display of pageantry and drama. The festival is underpinned by their commitment to provide you, our visitors, with an authentic medieval experience. This would not be possible without their dedication and passion for history. And I thank them all for their contribution to the success of our festival and supporting the ongoing work of the museum. I also take this opportunity to thank my remarkable team of coordinators who have volunteered their time throughout this year to make this event possible. And they today are supported by another hundred or so volunteers who work behind the scenes to, in all aspects of the festival to make it run smoothly. So I acknowledge and thank them for all their hard work. This Not festival also a milestone that we need to acknowledge today. <coughs> This year we celebrate 20 years of Sir Blair Martin, our distinguished Lord Carol. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Mike Charlton. With the bell now rung, the festival is under proper jurisdiction. The fair and the markets are now under proper weights and money. And our guard is at the ready to dispense justice for any who would not play well together. But so, we move to honoring the captain. Since the dawn of time. Humankind has been on a quest. A quest for what is good, true, valued and praiseworthy. These men approaching the castle of Abbotsford were once led by their fearless captain. These men under their captain, have searched long for such a reward. Now, their captain is no more. 
He feasts in Valhalla's halls with the All Father. From Eula to Midsommar, he fought the serpent, Aetir Ormur. The fight was his alone, as he honor bound his guard not to join him. He prevailed upon that word. Now, to honor his sacrifice and to preserve his memory, they come to the castle of Abistow to offer his shield and his helm to his sorrowing lady and her companions. Bound. Swords are sharp, spears and axes have long reach. They will faithfully guard this castle, the tournament and the festival in his memory. They all swear the solemn oath of fidelity and chivalry. I thus swear before this assembled company in the remembrance of our late captain, and for all who fight here this day, shall be the champion of all that is the spirit, and shall not dissemble, nor encourage falsehood, and shall remain faithful to my pledged word. Glory, Patri, et Filio, et Spiritu Sancti, sicut erat in principio, et nunc, et in semper, et in seculorum. Amen. by his sorrowing lady. And now a great list of knights and men at arms who throughout history will take these tournament fields to uphold the oath, to receive great honor and the prize of glory hereafter. All in the blessed memory of the captain of Starea Ledoga. Your applause now will honor the captain and those who have kept his memory. Then let us bring forward those who will richly entertain you this day, led by the Knights Templar, carrying the reliquy of Our Lady, accompanied by the monks of Scola Cantorum and the members of Hotremer. Sir, you will see forces exiting the castle. They are uh, the Sultan himself out for a nice stroll. The two horses, just so you are aware, they are Archer and Saladin. Please give them a little bit of patience because trying to work with horses can be very difficult. They do, after all, have a mind of their own. The Sultan and one of his bodyguards are out on a merry stroll around the land of Sephoria. The Holy Lands, as you may have seen in many movies, are very dry. And places where you can find water are far between and hotly contested. Soon, crusading forces will emerge. The forces of Renard de Chateron and he will be inspecting the grounds around the area of Sephoria, the springs of Sephoria. The turmoil, the political turmoil at this time is quite high. After all, the forces of Christendom have traveled 
far across the land and the sea to come to these lands where Jesus Christ himself once walked to take these lands back for Christendom. However, they have not yet faced an enemy such as Salah Adin, a man who was able to unite the once scattered and misarrayed Arabic forces. Renard de Chatelon, busy in his studies of the land, is out on a merry stroll when, with only a few people, he is spied by our Sultan. Renard does not look too happy having Renard a Saladin is... in his land, or his soon-to-be land. Soon-to-be land. Renard is not happy, for he does not have a full contingent with him. Normally, our son of a king would have an entire army with him, but this is the equivalent of being caught with his pants down, if you will. Salah Adin, Salah Adin wishes to humble the thorn in his side that is Renard de Chatillon. For Renard has been very aggressive and not following any of the truces that have been put down. At the current moment, you may think it weird, but Renard is wearing tiraz bands upon his arms in much the same custom that Arabic people do. Normally, the Arabic script would read, Allahu Akbar, God is great. However, the bands on Renard's arms read, the Duke is great. And so, he has indeed insulted the religion of these fine people. In an attempt to parlay, not that much is going on at the moment, in an attempt to parlay, the two forces meet, or the two leaders meet. Will this meeting be amicable? Somehow I think not. For Renard is very aggressive and does not wish to see these foreigners. The Sultan Saladin demands to speak to the leader of these invading Christian forces. However, the bodyguard, and she screamed like a girl. Can you read that? In an attempt to have peaceful negotiations, Renard reminds the Sultan that he did in fact kill his sister, and she screamed like a girl. As you can see, this is Renard's form of peaceful negotiations. Saladin reminds the Christians that they are not to kill. It is one of their commandments. However, in typical Christian fashion, there is a loophole found. That thou not kill are the Christians. And these people are clearly not Christian. Mention of treaty, an argument going. Fortunately, no swords have been drawn yet. Do we think, oh, I speak too soon. It appears that swords are about to be drawn. Could this be, could this be the beginnings of hostile relations? A skirmish. 
at the springs of Sephoria. And so, our forces assemble, both sides eager for blood, eager to rid their lands of the foreigners, both sides believing they have the rights of the land. Salah Adin, Salal Adin, I will remember how to say that properly soon. Salal Adin, Pistol, orders are given, and soon we shall see a mighty clash. Who will be victorious? Will Ronald de Chatillon and the strength of the Crusader forces hold true? Or will those of the so-called pretend religion only made up a few hundred years ago. Will they be the ones to see victory this day? My lords and my ladies, who do you want to see victorious this day? Do He's you not want to see the, the Christ time? <laughs> Lucky for you. Lucky for me. Oh, maybe not. Apparently, the Sultan is coming to have words with me. I am lucky to stand alive. However, at the moment, I am simply a mouthpiece. And if I wasn't here, who would tell your story? Allah would tell your story. Well, I am sure... Dara Isahad Salahadin, I am here. You can, you can take rid of him at any time. Yes. <laughs> the other mouthpiece will take over, should I insult the Sultan too much. I had best hold my tongue. Are all these crusaders the foreigners in this land? Well, that is up to you to decide. Who holds the true claim to these lands? Perhaps this battle will tell. If it's tough. Do you go for our crusader forces? Or do you go for the great Salahadin? I think the crusaders are on the back foot. Oh, sorry, Renal. Sorry. And now the forces march towards each other while I get quickly out of the way. Normally, the warriors in the Middle East would rely on heavy archery from a distance. But for the moment, being on foot. They have to deal with the heavily armoured and armed Crusader forces. Renard de Chateaune leading from behind, making sure that everybody dies gloriously for him, but not him. And soon there are only few remaining forces fight against one safely. The Crusaders are ready. Are the Saracen forces ready? I don't think they have a chance. A choice, I should say. Or a chance. Or a chance. Oh, apparently I'm being spoken to again. Or spoken at again. Oh, apparently it is written in history that the Saracens win, so it's my fault that in this particular battle, this was a small part of the overall battle that I'm sure had more people, and therefore the mighty Saracens won. So, Crusaders, learn your part. Remember that you must lose this time to be his own The left will advance. Get off your horse and fight like The right shall fall back. How will these 
Eastern forces who are supposed to be victorious survive this interesting dilemma. One of the Saracens managed to break around behind the advancing left. And now they have surrounded. They have they have the crusading forces surrounded, and as you can see, that's all it takes. This may be going the way of history. Yes. You see, that first battle was just a small part of the big battle, and now this is more accurate of, of what actually happened. Ladies and gentlemen, are we having fun? Do you want to see Bertain Blood? Do you want to see grown men swinging large pieces of steel at each other? Lawrence David! Yeah! Yeah! And victory to the Saracens! And now there's nowhere to be seen. That's a very good point. Oh, there he is! He's hiding! Sorry, he's strategically witnessing the battle from behind the banner bearer. From behind very very, very brave of you. Bravely letting others die and take the glory for you. You see, look at him standing there, bravely taking all the letting the others take the glory for him. Very bravely standing behind a priest. Yes, yes indeed. A fearsome battle. being made. This is a bit more. Maybe not so evenly matched. Renard asks, do you wish to have a good me? Well, first you must take on my bodyguard, who are now dead. <laughs> In true fashion, the Duke shows exactly what he is capable of and why he lets the others take the glory from him. Uh, Who will dare challenge Renard de Chatillon? Uh, <laughs> Who dares defy the will of God and fight God's wolf himself? A small Saracen steps forward, bravely willing to die at the hands of the of Renard laughs at the combat that is about to take place. Although, telling blows are given, it is harsh. Ah, but the young, the young warrior, small warrior, falls. Oh. And somebody charges. Oh no, what is happening? It looks like God is single-handedly take on the Saracen army. How will this go? I'm sure if Renard said it himself, that's how he said he won one of the Crusades. Well, he may as well have the fun of trying it. And now, more the forces of Islam approach, regardless as to the wishes of the Crusaders. Crusaders try to fight. Oh, they come through the middle! Oh, yeah. Oh, single blow and it's over, perhaps, is it? Maybe, maybe he's just stunned like a man. Just a flesh wound. It is but a flesh wound. And so they fight, and it continues. And there are shields put in the way, as that's what shields are for. And, and there we go, a final tap to the head. And our Saracen is down. Who else shall face the mighty foe, the wolf of God himself? A dwarf steps forward. Dwarfs are people too. Yes. I didn't say they weren't, I just said it's all step forward. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble again. Our mouthpiece is getting himself, his tongue is writing checks his body can't catch. Isn't that correct? Yes. In a little mini battle of their own going over there. Ooh, look at that. Fun for the rest of us. Who shall face down? Renard de Chatillon, Wolf of God. Not those two. 
That's the problem with axes. If you get in too close, they don't work. Yes, yes, the dwarf was axing for it. And now, who next shall face down Renard de Chatillon, Wolf of God? It looks like Renard has some help. Oh. He can't, he can't have help, that's he's, not fair. He's outsourcing. Is, that's not how one-on-one -on -one combat goes in this silly script of ours. We have a script? Apparently. Somewhere. No, I'm just making it up as we go along. All right, and now perhaps the final battle. Oh no, we've got three people fighting one-on-one -on -one battles. Very good, here we go. Shall Renard survive this battle? I have a feeling the answer is no. But we shall see. Our fierce warriors fight. And I think we're, I think the wolf of God 